Affinity just announced their biggest update ever. I know that sounds like clickbait, but there are so many changes. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. The new Affinity update has three major changes. First, all of the Affinity programs are being combined into one Affinity app. That means Affinity Photo, Designer, and Publisher are all being merged into one program called Affinity. That alone would be big news, but there's still two more major changes. And the next one is Affinity's pricing model. Because as of today, Affinity is free. Yes, you heard that right. Affinity is now free. But... What's the catch? Affinity can't stay in business if it doesn't make money, so what's going on here? Well, that brings us to the last major change. In order to make money, Affinity is adding subscription AI. I know, everyone's two favorite words, subscription and AI. (laughs) So I guess you could say Affinity is actually free. But to be clear, everything from the old Affinity programs really is free. But in addition to that, they added some new AI tools which require a monthly subscription. Specifically, you need a Canva subscription. Remember how last year Canva bought Affinity? Well, it looks like we're finally seeing what that means. It means that Affinity's AI tools are part of a Canva Pro subscription, which costs $15 a month or $120 a year. So whether you take this as good news or bad news is up to you, but as for me, I'm actually okay with it because here's the thing. Most of you don't need these AI tools, which means you don't need to pay for the subscription. We'll look at the AI tools later in this video, but honestly, I think most people will be just fine with the free version of Affinity, and to me, that's pretty exciting. But I'm sure this will get plenty of discussion in the comments, so let's move on to something else you might be interested in, which is what the new Affinity actually looks like. And here it is, your first look at the new Affinity. Right now, we're in the Vector workspace, so we have access to all of the tools for creating vectors. But let's say you want to do some photo editing. In that case, you just need to switch to the Pixel workspace. Then you have everything you need for professional photo editing. But it's actually even better than that, because you can customize each workspace however you want. Just click on the button underneath the tools, and then you can add any of Affinity's tools to your workspace. There's actually a lot of ways to customize your workspace, so stay tuned for future videos where I'll show you how to customize it exactly how you want. But for now, there's some other changes I want to tell you about. You already know that the new Affinity has all of the old Affinity tools and that they've added new AI tools but there's also new tools in the free version of Affinity. And I'm excited to tell you that they finally added a vectorize tool. Let's say you found this image online, but you want it to be a vector. Well, in that case, just come up to the vector menu and then down to image trace. We'll go over these settings in a future video, but all you really need to do is press apply. And just like that, the image is now a vector. And that's not the only new feature we got. For example, we can export books in the EPUB format, which I know a lot of people have asked for. And for photographers, they've added a new and improved sharpening filter. We can also make mesh gradients now, which I'm sure a lot of designers will be happy to see. They've added all this and more, which we'll explore in future videos. But for now, let's take a look at the new AI tools. All of the AI tools can be found in the Canva AI workspace. There's quite a few to choose from, but honestly, most of them aren't that important. For example, there's a new AI cropping tool so that you can expand your photos with AI. It's a cool feature, but not something you usually need. 
There's also an AI for coloring old photos, but unfortunately, its quality is pretty hit or miss. We also get an AI art generator, but personally, I'm not interested in that. So instead, let's talk about the thing everyone will either love or hate, and that is generative edit. Or in other words, letting AI edit your photos. To do this, just select the generative edit tool, and then type in whatever changes you want. For example, when I entered make it winter, the photo was turned into a beautiful winter scene. Or as another example, when I entered make it a watercolor painting, I got a lovely watercolor effect. We can also make targeted edits. Just select the generative fill tool, and then click and drag to choose the area you want to affect. So using this tool, I was able to give her a cute new hat. Or as another example, I gave this girl a cool pair of sunglasses. Or with this man, I gave him a nice blue tie. But as we all know, AI is far from perfect. When I tried to give this man a tie, it didn't turn out so well. Or with this woman, her new sunglasses weren't really what I was hoping for. Or when I wanted this photo to be warm and sunny, it just made the photo orange. So I tried to make another photo warm and sunny, and the AI barely did anything. And sometimes the AI will do unexpected things. Like when I changed this photo to winter, it added a totally different woman. The AI is also limited to a low resolution. From far away it looks fine, but if you zoom in, you can see a lot of detail is lost. So overall, here's my opinion. If you think of this AI as a toy, you'll have a good time playing with it. But if you think it will perfectly edit your photos, you're going to be disappointed. For better or for worse, AI isn't ready to replace humans. But to finish this video, I want to show you the one AI tool I'm actually excited for, and that's the new AI selection tool. Just click on the Select Subject button, and after a few seconds of thinking, we have a perfect selection of the woman. But you might be wondering, how does this compare to the object selection tool, which we can use in the free version of Affinity? Well, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two selections. And at first glance, they look pretty similar. But if we zoom in, you can see the AI did a much better job, and that's true for every photo I've tested. But even though the new select subject is impressive, there are three things to keep in mind. First, select subject isn't perfect, so you still might need to clean up your mask. And second, you can clean up the object selection tool's mask to make it look just as good as select subject. So in other words, select subject can save you time, but it's not necessary because you can still make precise selections in the free version of Affinity. So is the AI subscription worth it? For some people, the answer might be yes, but for most of you, I think you should skip the subscription and enjoy the rest of Affinity for free. So those are my thoughts on the new Affinity update. But with so many changes, I'm curious what you think about it. So be sure to leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.